Hey beautiful peeps, even though I had plenty of trouble with AIG and Hammy Boy last time, I noticed they took out all my clips of them, and I'm sorry about that. So this time I'm going to try to remedy that. Because Ken, no matter how much you try to shut me up, I am not going to shut up. So you might as well stop this ridiculous campaign about shutting up everyone who disagrees with you. Now for those who don't know, the FBI does allow people to respond to videos and use clips of those videos as long as as they are critiquing them and i probably could have future lisa cutting in i did find a way to get around the copyright i am going to speed hammy boy up to 1.25 which makes him sound ridiculous which is actually pretty fitting um but i'm also going to do um some other things with the picture Submitted the claim for review. However, that would have taken too long because I really needed to get it out today because I do try to get my debunks out for my members on Sunday. So I'm going to try a different method. So with that explanation out of the way, Please subscribe if you have not already subscribed. If you know you're already going to like this video, please leave a thumbs up. And if not, then leave a thumbs up at the end or thumbs down. So, Hamming Boy, believe me when I tell you, I am going to find some way to bring you down. Because the truth needs to be known. That you are a fucking liar. Now let's go. Think about where we get our idea for our week. The rotation of the earth, the day. Uh, the earth and the moon, the month. The earth and the sun, the year. The week comes from the Bible. God made everything in six days and rested for one. I've already explained where we got our seven day week from. And it was not from the Bible, Kenny boy. So, I'm going to go a different direction in this video. Um, Kenny, why is it that our days of the week are named for pagan gods? Since you don't know this, I'll go over it for you. Sunday is the sun's day. Monday is the moon's day. Tuesday is Tiu, or Ter's day. Wednesday is Woden's Day, Thursday is Thor's Day, Friday is Frey's Day, and Saturday is Saturn's Day. And just to round out the months and the years, you seem to think that the solar calendar is the only calendar. You know there are lunar calendars out there, don't you? And why would the moon have different days of the month going around the earth oh and you seem to think for no reason at all that the days were always 24 hours long kenny the days weren't always 24 hours long i don't know where you even got that from and uh for the years yeah the years weren't always 364 days and yes I said 364 days to correct your dumbass, whereas you say 365 days. Actually, the year is more like 364 and a quarter days, aside from leap years. So, yeah, there's that. You don't get millions of years from the Bible. It's not there. First of all, Ken, let's get this out of the way right now. The Earth is not millions of years old, okay? 
It is billions of years old. Um, more or less along the lines of 4.54 billion years old. Of course, that 4.54 billion year old estimate of the age of the Earth comes with an asterisk that says, to the best of our knowledge, the Earth is 4.54 billion years old, and there may be tweaks in the future, but it's around there. I guess if you wanted to be pedantic about it, you could say that technically the Earth is millions of years old, but uh, why? That's like trying to measure the circumference of the Earth in millimeters. Come on. As for millions of years not being in the Bible, well... You know what, Ken? It's not not in the Bible either. See, I can play this game too. But what you fail to recognize is that they wouldn't have known that. You see, Ken, in the 21st century, we have this little thing called, you know, science that has a lot of fields in it. And there's not just one field of science that lets us know that the Earth is billions of years old. It's more like a lot of fields of science. And let's not even forget that you have not even tried to prove that your book is accurate. All you've ever said is, my book says it's true, so my book is true. And that is circular reasoning. Because, Ken, the Quran says the Quran is true. In the 1700s and 1800s, atheists, deists who didn't want to believe God and, and, and wanted what they call a natural explanation for the fossil record said, no, the fossils aren't the result of Noah's flood. The fossil record was laid down millions of years before man. Um, why are you talking about fossils when you're trying to talk about the age of the earth? Fossils have nothing to do with the age of the earth because, Kenny boy, fossils don't go back to the beginning of earth's history. Well, wrong again, Kenny boy. How wrong can you be? Where do I even start picking this apart? Well, from what I can gather, the first one to suggest that the Earth was millions of years old was William Thompson, also known as Lord Kelvin. Yes, that Lord Kelvin, you know, of the Kelvin scale. Since you probably don't know what the Kelvin scale is, Kenny Boy, I'll go ahead and tell you. It's the scale that starts at absolute zero. You know, negative 273 degrees C, otherwise known as the temperature at which all motion stops. But anyway, that's not what we're here for. We are here for the age of the Earth. In 1862, he estimated the age of the Earth to be 100 million years old. And, by the way, this is the same dude that came up with the second law of thermodynamics. So, I don't want to hear about the second law of thermodynamics. And, by the way, he was a Christian, not an atheist. Later on in life, he revised this estimate down to 40 to 60 million years old for the age of the Earth. I believe that was sometime in the 1880s. Um, and this really upset the biologists because the biologists said that's not enough time for evolution to take place. However, this was fixed in the 20th century. And how is this problem fixed? Glad you asked. It was fixed by the discovery of radioactivity. You know, the same radioactivity that you guys go running to to support your made-up idea of a 6,000-year-old Earth and a massive flood because you say that radioactivity will 
different. If you look at the fossil, if, if there was millions of years in the fossil record before man, you got death, you got bloodshed, you got evidence of animals eating each other, bones in their stomachs. The Bible says originally Adam and Eve were vegetarian. We couldn't even eat meat. We weren't told we could eat meat until after the flood. Um, what do Adam and Eve have to do with non-human animals? God never said the non-human animals couldn't eat meat. Like, duh, you're just piling a bunch of crap in there saying he said something that he didn't say. But uh, he didn't even say Adam and Eve couldn't eat meat. He just said you can eat plants. Duh. And then if you look in the fossil record, there's evidence of diseases like cancer and brain tumors and arthritis. Wait a minute. After God made Adam, he said everything he made was very good. How can you have all these disease and suffering and, 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 and diseases like brain tumors and cancer? And God calls that very good. Because your God is a dickhead son of a bitch who gets his rocks off on suffering. Uh, that's why he can call it very good. Can you don't think these things through, do you? Seriously. I didn't either when I was a Christian. That's why they actively discourage people from thinking. Oh, sure, they might say, think people. But um, if you really listen to the subtext, they want you to do the opposite. Because if you really think about it, You'll come to the very opposite conclusion they want you to. See, so here's the point. The Bible makes it clear death is a result of sin. This is a groaning world because of sin. This is not the world as God made it. This is the world that's suffering from our sin. Wow. So much wrong with that. I don't even know where to start. First of all, you have to prove that such a concept as sin exists. And you have not even tried to do that. You know, atheists don't accept that concept. Second, the Tanakh does not say anything about death being the result of sin. Oh, I should back up and say, God said, on the day you eat of the fruit, you shall surely die. And um, they didn't. Gee, I wonder why. Now, I know you idiots fix this with the apologetic that God didn't mean they would physically die in that day. He meant they would spiritually die in that day. And got to say that's pretty fucked up. Uh, and I'll tell you why. First of all, you cannot accept that apologetic and be a biblical literalist. Because God never said that you will die spiritually he said you will die full stop what is your excuse second if death was the punishment for eating the fruit why did god kick them out of the garden of eden and say lest you Put forth your hand and take forth from the tree of life and live forever. That sounds to me like eating from the tree of life is what gave them life immortally. And they weren't promised not to die ever. They just had life as long as they ate from the tree of life, and if they would stop eating from the tree of life, then their immortal life would be over. Why else would God kick them out of the Garden of Eden? You don't think this through, do you? And last but not least, even if I accepted the story, which I don't, it is fucked up to punish me for someone else's misdeed not even a crime just a misdeed well friends i don't want to induce a concussion or brain aneurysm due to facepalm so i think that's enough stupid for today 
you know, if you like this kind of content, please subscribe. Um, follow me on Twitter. For some reason, I had to get another Twitter account. So if you're already following me, please make sure that you are following me on my new account. Link in the description instead of my old account. Um, so, yeah. Um, we're getting invaded by the stupid over here in America. Don't know about anywhere else in the world, but definitely here in America. You know, Australia, if you want Ken Ham back, I'll gladly hand him over to you. I mean, you know, I can't deport him. I can't do anything. But anyway, but yeah, I mean, maybe together we can get him to go back to Australia. Then you guys can deal with them. Don't forget to hit the like button. And if you are not subscribed, please subscribe. If you are subscribed, make sure you're still subscribed. Because for some reason, YouTube loves to unsubscribe people. And I will talk to you next time. Bye, everyone. I recently set up a Patreon account. Um, you can follow me over there. I will start releasing patron-only content as soon as I get probably about 10 people. So, yeah, follow me over there only if you are in a financially stable position. If you like what I do, please consider becoming a member of this channel. You can become a member for as low as 99 cents a month. You get custom emojis, and you get these debunks early. Well, friends, until next time, I bid you adieu, and may you always have stupid to entertain you. Goodbye.